Hi, my name is Gianni Guarmiero, I'm from Poto Project and in this video, which is a si part of a series on dimensional analysis, I'll be discussing what is dimensional analysis and its application. I'll introduce the two main methods used in dimensional analysis, Beckingham method and Nusser method. I will compare these two methods and I'll conclude with some remarks. Dimensional analysis deals with dimension. For example, 5 feet. 5 is the number and feet is the dimension. We also dimensional analysis deal with consistency. So if we have on one side of the equation 5 feet and the other side 5 meter, we have to make sure that it's the same units. Dimensional analysis on top of that dealing with non-dimensionalized or dimensionless group or numbers. For example, Mach number. Mach number represent the ratio between the velocity of the fluid to the velocity of speed of sound. Mach found that this ratio actually controlling the phenomena rather than absolute velocity. In the turn of century, or the last century, there were several equations that we didn't know how to solve and there were a possible two approaches to this equation. One was to use approximation or to solve it using experiment. Nusselt and Beckingham come up with the idea instead of solving this equation uh, using all the variety of parameter, we will use dimensional variety and this thing will allow us to minimize the amount of work that we have. And doing so established the dimensional analysis at discipline and is taught in many scientific disciplines. Well the the point that I would like to mention is that the Beckingham method used in fluid mechanics why while Nussel method used in the in the heat transfer. There's no number that bear Beckingham name, while Nusselt and Schmidt, his student, and Schmidt's student, Eckert, my advisor, have every one of them have a number on his name. Eckert was the instrumental who make the in dimensional analysis in heat transfer using Nussel method. So what is Beckingham method? Beckingham method we do not use equation or boundary condition or initial condition. For example, if you want to find out the amount of wood that you use in the tree, you will assume that it will be some kind of area of the trunk time all the way to the top of the tree. But immediately we realize that the top branches have different area than the trunk. So this area of the tr of the branches is different than this thing. So as usual engineers do, we define ratio between the actual wood to the total wood if the trunk area was continually all, all the way to the top. And hopefully that it will be a function of the diameter and the height. If it is correct, then on the left hand side we will have ratio of volume which is dimensionless. Therefore the right hand side has to be dimensionless as well. Th that means it either will be the diameter over the height or the height over the diameter. In Nusselt method we have to have governing equation. For example if we take a problem of a ball falling down from a distance then the governing equation will be Newton's second law, which is the mass times the acceleration has to be equal to the force, which is the mass times the gravity. Immediately we can recognize that the mass is cancelled and therefore the mass is not affecting this problem. And as usually we will have two initial conditions that the location of the ball at time equal to zero and the velo initial velocity of the ball. 
The difficult part of dimensional analysis of Nusen method is to define the characteristic dimension or length. In this case, we will define the dimension, dimensionless, uh, the characteristic length as x0, and the dimensionless and the characteristic time as the time that takes for human to walk this distance, which is human velocity is approximately six m km per hour. And typically what we will do is we will write dx and dx will be is equal to dx0 with the multiply by x0 and then we have to divide by x0 and because x over x0 is equal to x bar we have x bar x0 times x bar and since x0 is a constant we can take it out of the derivative so if we do the same thing in the initial condition, here it's a bit tricky. We will have the time, we multiply the time by the characteristic time and divide by characteristic time tau. And since t over t time, a t uh, tau is the t bar, and then we have t time t bar, and because the characteristic time is cannot be zero, therefore is the characteristic a t bar must be equal to zero and the same thing we're doing for x and then we're going to get this initial condition which is x bar has to be equal to one and the same thing what we're doing to the initial velocity we're just putting it into the derivative we're doing the same process and then we were going to get that x bar dot equal to zero and the same thing what we will do to the governing equation. We just notice because the second derivative and the second derivative I is a derivative of the first derivative. Therefore, we can do the same operation that we done before. What we can notice that in this case, we will have x0 times x bar for the upper part. And on the bottom, we will have tau time t bar and tau again time t bar for the second part and therefore we're going to have and we will move it outside as we done before and we're going to have x bar over t tau bar is uh, square tau square time the derivative equal to g or if you move it to the other side we're going to have a differential equation non-dimensional differential equation which is have three parameter x bar t bar and this new parameter which is the fruit number if we were using a Beckingham method to do the same operation our guess initially will be that it is the mass the gravity some characteristic time and some length however going over method that we will explain in the next video will show that the mass will drop out because it doesn't have any counterpart to balance it and the, and the only dimensional number that we're going to get is either g time tau over x uh, time tau square over x0 or x0 over g tau square and the question is whether of these whether or not this results was the same thing that we were getting in Nussel method. The answer is not because in this case we get only one parameter and in Nussel method we're getting three. Additional point that I would like to mention is the the dimensional uh, ori object oriented characteristic of Nussel method. If we add another effect, for example the resistance of the flow to the ball and normally in governing equation will be some kind of in stocks flow assuming that it's relatively slow it will be some kind of k times the velocity we're going to get another parameter that affecting the flow that means we have x bar t bar fruit number and we have a, a new non-dimensional parameter 
that means we have four. If he has done it in Beckingham method, we will have two. The mission analysis does not provide solution, but provides some understanding. The mission analysis is very important, which I didn't discuss before, do not work all the time. There are situations like multi-phase flow, the dimensional analysis do not provide a solution. However, and that's the main point, dimensional analysis provide better understanding looking on what design of experiment we can and how to look on the problem. We have to remember if we use Nusson number we're getting several more parameters which actually better describe the flow or the, the phenomena rather using Beckingham method. In Beckingham method we get a few parameters that affect in the flow. Many times using this method do not provide a proper solution to the problem. Thank you for listening and hope that you will hear our next video.